LeBron James, whoop, whoop. Of course they lost. But anyway, um, there's a guy cheering over here. I, I don't know what that's about, but anyway. My name is uh, Mustafa Sanjata. I, um, I was born in Akron, Ohio, and raised up in a small college town not far from there uh, called Worcester. I was adopted into a family uh, uh, from southern Georgia uh, who were uh, migrant workers. My father was a 33rd degree Mason, so he didn't hold too tight to religion. But my mother was a church mother, so she, she was very much in the church. I started out uh, in Ohio um, uh, as a youth, uh, going and listening to uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan from the Nation of Islam uh, on the east side of Cleveland. Then I began to be interested in Islam itself and, and what it was. Read the autobiography of Malcolm X and his journey. And eventually I kind of left all that alone and, and I went into the military. I met, I was a driver for two Jordanian pilots, uh, which was my first real uh, introduction to Islam. I think even it was Ramadan, so they were fasting and they would break fast and they would make salat and they would try to explain everything to me. I kind of got threw off at that point because I had asked the question, do you have to pray in Arabic? And the, one of the colonels said, yes, it has to be in Arabic. So I asked him, you know, uh, why would God demand that I speak a language that I can't, I can't speak and I don't understand? And so I kind of left it then. I, I, it put me off. I met uh, uh, a lady named, uh, from Senegal named Meriamu. Uh, she was a friend of my wife at the time. She was doing some counseling with us and, and, and talking with us and uh, uh, introduced me to the Quran itself. Having read the Bible and, and, and memorized parts of it, and after having read the whole of the Quran, the, the lights just came on. She took me to Ida Oberstein and I took Shahada. But most of the brothers there were French speaking, so, <laughs> so there was a bigger language barrier, just, not just the Arabic or the German, uh, now there was the French. So I didn't learn much at that point in time. Uh, it wasn't until I, I, I got out of the military in 89 and went back home, returned back home, that uh, I met a wonderful band of brothers uh, in the place where I grew up at in Worcester. They were there. Allah couldn't have chosen a better band of brothers to teach me my deen. My biggest concern, I think, was with my father, my adopted father. I felt bad about offending him. And here is a man that adopted me and gave me his name. At the same time, I wanted to let him know what it was I was doing because he had asked me at one point in time, you, you seem distant, you know, what's, what's, what's going on, what's happening, you know. Um, and so I told him, you know, I, I've become Muslim and I've changed my name. And he said, well, why do you have to be Muslim? Why, can, why do you have to be anything? You know, because this is the Mason line, right? Why do you have to be anything? You can believe in God, but you don't have to believe in certain, any dogma, any, any particular dogma. And I said, well, there's a way to believe in God and there's a way to follow God. And, uh, and God has sent that guidance to us. And this is the particular guidance that I follow, and this is what I believe. He didn't speak to me for about two weeks. He, he, we didn't call. When I would call, he wasn't there. After two weeks, wallahi, it was like it never happened. The love will overcome all of that. You know, if you love them and they love you, you know, um, they will eventually, if not at first, <laughs> jump on the bandwagon. They will eventually um, uh, accept what you have accepted. Um, um, and that's just out of love. And that's, that's, I think that's God's love, right? Or the, the love of the parent for the child, or the, the sister and the brother, or the uncle, or the cousin, or, or whomever. Last year, God saw fit to allow me to find my biological family. And they know that I'm Muslim and they've met me and, you know, they, they kind of they kind of keep back a little, you know, because <laughs> they're not sure of how to act or what to say or what to do. And I try to make them as comfortable as possible. Um, but like I, once again, I think it's love. Love overcomes all of that.